They preferred that over the black woman Democrat, period, period, full stop. They preferred it. This isn't a narrow electoral win. Trump won the popular vote as of right now. So the blame game is useful if you're accurately diagnosing the problem. I don't believe it's accurately being diagnosed based on what I just told you. As With far Donald as Trump's recent election win, Democrats are examining what went wrong. And David Pakman is one of those taking a closer look. Today, we'll check out clips from David Pakman's show as he breaks down why Trump won and Kamala Harris lost. I'll share my thoughts along the way. Let's dive in. Talking points. I don't think a single one of the uh, blames that I just uh, uh, outlined for you really explains what made sense here, uh, what took place, makes sense of what took place here. To me, what happened is actually far simpler and it's going to come off as far more offensive than these explanations. But I think it is far more accurate. Number one, millions of Americans quite literally have no idea what's going on. And I know that it's sort of like, oh, you're, David, are you doing the Republicans are stupid thing again? Listen, there's plenty of uninformed Democrats. There's uninformed independents. But there is a degree to which millions of these Trump voters have literally no idea what's going on. At a recent rally, a bunch of uh, young white men, Trump voters were asked, why are you voted for voting for Trump? And they said, because gas prices are so high. The truth is that gas prices are at their lowest post pandemic point tied with a bunch of post pandemic lows. That is just the truth. So saying I'm voting for Trump because of high gas prices when gas prices are low, you are simply clueless and Trump benefits from the clueless vote. Same thing with inflation. Oh, inflation's so high. Inflation has come down dramatically under Joe Biden. And in fact, it's come down faster than in other Western developed nations. Um, uh, so, so that's one thing that a lot of people are just completely clueless about what's going on. Number two, Trump made a play on men with a particular perspective on masculinity. Now, as many of you know, we did a piece on it. Many of you also know I've been recommending that you check out some of Scott Galloway's recent uh, sort of uh, uh, monologues and um, uh, uh, discussions of masculinity, of a more logical uh, approach to masculinity. Trump made the play for men. He won men and he is deliberately and overtly trying to appeal to a certain type of man going on the Rogan show, going on the milk boys, the Nelk boys, whatever they call themselves, uh, bringing in RFK, who I believe is, is known that he's a steroid guy, I think is I thought it was known anyway, um, sort of bolstering this idea um, of the roid raging type aggressive man and saying, welcome and come on in and you can be more like that if you vote for me. Great as Tim Walls is, he can fix uh, cars and trucks and he hunts and he knows football. It was not enough to counteract what was an appealing message to white men from Donald Trump. And then third, and here's it, it hurts to say it. Millions of people liked what Trump was genuinely offering. Trump was genuinely offering the opportunity of a feeble, cognitively declining wannabe dictator authoritarian who would uh, who promise mass deportations. They preferred that over the black woman Democrat, period, period, full stop. They preferred it. This isn't a narrow electoral win. Trump won the popular vote as of right now. So the blame game is useful if you're accurately diagnosing the problem. I don't believe it's accurately being diagnosed based on what I just told you as far as the talking. David Pakman has a few key points about the recent election. First, David Pakman argues that many Trump voters are uninformed about current issues like gas prices and inflation. At a recent rally, young Trump supporters mentioned high gas prices as their reason for supporting Donald Trump, even though gas prices are at post-pandemic lows. David Pakman also points out that inflation has decreased significantly under Joe Biden, even faster than in other Western countries. But many voters seem unaware of this progress. According to David Pakman, Donald Trump is benefiting from what David Pakman calls the clueless vote. Next, David Pakman explains that Donald Trump has made a strategic appeal to men who identify with traditional masculinity. David Pakman mentions Trump's appearances on platforms like Joe Rogan's show and his association with figures like RFK Jr., who represents a certain macho image. According to David Pakman, this has been effective in attracting a particular type of male voter. 
David Pakman contrasts this appeal with Democratic leaders, saying that while some may embody manly qualities, they haven't captured the same level of engagement as Donald Trump's message to men. Lastly, David Pakman believes that millions of voters preferred Donald Trump's clear and strong promises, even if they leaned authoritarian, like his pledges on mass deportations. David Pakman argues that this resonated more with voters than Kamala Harris's platform, and that Trump's message was compelling enough to win the popular vote. David Pakman suggests that to understand why Donald Trump won, it's essential to recognize the strong appeal of his messaging. Points. 